right, so it's time for chapter seven. We're gonna see where they go next because the bus took off again. Wild and crazy times. Chapter seven, time was whizzing by outside the windows of the magic school jet. Where, I mean, when are we headed, Ms. Frizzle? Wanda asked. What do you mean when, Arnold asked. We were almost burnt to a crisp. Don't you think it's time to go home? Just one more stop, Arnold. We're still in search of an owner for Ralphie's tooth. The Cretaceous period is next, the Frizz answered, clicking on the screen of her laptop. Dorothy Ann had her head buried in her dinosaur field guide. Hey, Ralphie, she said, you have a great chance of finding the owner of your fossil now. There are many more plant eaters in the Cretaceous period than ever before. From the desk of Ms. Frizzle, the Cretaceous period. The Cretaceous period lasted from 144 to 65 million years ago. The supercontinent of Pangaea was breaking into the separate continents that we have today. So remember we talked about that before, how everything was chunked together. By the end of the Cretaceous period, there were seasons. So by the end of this period, there are different seasons. There's four of them. And different parts of the world experience them in different ways. Like our winter here is very cold, but in Australia, the same time period is very hot just because of the way the world, the earth shifts and rotates as it goes about the sun. And that's what gives us our seasons. So we have spring, which is what we're currently in. Summer, which is coming up soon, so we'll have break. Oh, actually, when you're, when you're watching this, it will be summer. But when I'm recording it, it's spring. And the fall is when I will see you again, and then there's winter, which we always spend together. Oh, okay. I don't mind checking out the teeth of dead dinosaurs, I said, but it's not easy to make a live dinosaur say, ah. Uh. You need some binoculars to help with your detective work, Ralphie, the Frizz said. She reached under the driver's seat and pulled out of a pair. Out a pair. Of course she did. Of course. I hung the binoculars around my neck, and just then we landed in the Cretaceous period with a splash. I mean, with a real splash. The magic school jet crash landed into a big lake. It started to sink, and there was water up to the windows. The Frizz thought fast and pushed the flotation button. The wings separated and turned into four big floating inner tubes. Look over by the shore, Carlos yelled. It's a herd of rhinoceroses. No, it's a herd of triceratops, Dorothy Ann corrected him. Let's get closer, the Frizz said, steering the floating bus jet nearer to where the triceratops were grazing. Dino fact fi data file. The triceratops looked like a rhinoceros and had three horns on its face and a bony plate or frill behind its skull. It walked slowly on four short legs and was one of the last horned dinosaurs to exist. Fun fact, Triceratops had a good defense system. It charged an enemy with its horned head just as rhinos do today. I checked out the Triceratops' teeth through my binoculars. None of them looked like my tooth fossil. Why are they called Triceratops, Miss Frizzle? Tim asked. Good question, Tim, the Frizz said. Many dinosaurs were named for the way they looked. Name that dino. The dinosaur is named by the scientist who first finds its fossils. Dinos are named for something special about the way they looked, like triceratops mean roughened three-horned face. Makes sense, it's rough, it's got three horns. Something special about the way they lived, like myosaura means good mother lizard. Myosaura dinosaurs took good care of their babies. Or the place where they were found. Utah raptor was found in the state of Utah. Hey, Ralphie, Carlos asked, what does a triceratops sit on? Tell me, Carlos, I said. It's Tricera bottom. Hmm, Keisha said, trying to ignore us. Things are so nice and peaceful in the Cretaceous period. Uh-oh, you spoke too soon, Tim said. He pointed to the other side of the lake. Troodon, Dorothy Ann gasped. The Troodon was named for its wounding teeth and was the size of an adult human. It could hold its prey with its three long clawed fingers. Fun fact, Troodon was the smartest dinosaur. It had the largest brain in proportion to its body weight. So the little Troodon looks like. I mean, they're kind of cute, but I guess I wouldn't think that if I came across one. I'd be like, oh, a snack? And I'd be like, no, no, I'm not a snack. <laughs> I might look like one, but I'm not. The group of Troodon were prowling along the water's edge. They weren't much taller than humans, but they had a wicked look in their big eyes. All of a sudden, the Troodon saw the herd of Triceratops across the water. Quick as lightning, they sped up on their skinny, fast legs. 
We've got to warn the Triceratops. My field guide said that Troodon will eat the babies of other dinosaurs, Dorothy Ann shouted. I leaned over Ms. Frizzle and honked the bus's horn. Rude, Ralphie, that's not your job. You shouldn't cross the, the line at the front of the bus. Never cross that line because then you're in a dangerous area. You could mess up what the bus driver's doing by being a distraction. That's why. Bus safety. That's what you came for. Miss Frizzle stepped on the gas and headed the bus even closer to the herd. The Triceratops looked up and saw the magic school bus churning toward them. With loud bellows, the herd took off into the woods. The Troodon were still chasing the herd, but the Triceratops had a good head start. They left the Troodon in the, in the dust. All right, Carlos said, giving me a high five. We outsmarted the Troodon. So we're at a picture and somebody in the bus is saying, you have to hit high gear. And someone else is saying, come on, Triceratops. There, there you go. You can see all the Triceratops and the Troodons. This one's got its mouth open. It's like, hey, I'm moving here. Come on, kids, the frizz said. Let's see if we can find the dino with Ralphie's tooth fossil. I'll park the bus up on the shore. Miss Frizzle released the air from our float and it turned back into a bus as we drove onto dry land. We scrambled out, ready to track down more dinosaurs. This is so much fun, Wanda said. But just then we heard a loud roar echo through the forest. It was followed by a sharp animal scream. Then the forest was quiet. Dead quiet. Dun, dun, dun. So I wonder what could happen in chapter eight. I mean, there's gotta be something coming. We only have two chapters left and then a little little dino quiz at the end. So, I'll see you then. Waving with both hands. Jazz fingers. All right, bye.